violations of human rights, animal rights, environmentalism and free press. The list is long, but Russia remains stubborn in the face of criticism. But that stubbornness hasn't gained them any favors either, especially now that they're put under the world's microscope, with the Winter Olympics in Sochi getting underway. Sochi will host some 2,900 athletes, but those athletes won't all have their political leaders watching them compete in Russia as EU officials, MEPs and American, French, German and Canadian politicians have decided to boycott the Olympics. One such MEP is Leonidas Donksis. Although I am tempted to say that the athletes shouldn't pay the price of the faults and wrongs, you know, it, done by their political elites, but I have to say that Please don't take this literally, but I find myself thinking that this Olympics is reminiscent of 1936 in Berlin. In some way, I have to say, I, I'm not saying that Putin equates to Hitler, but I'm saying that homophobic legislation and contempt for human rights and the foreign agent law, it goes against every single sensitivity and political sensibility practice. That's why I think that the boycott of the Sochi Olympic would be a very, very far and logical step. Another MEP who supports the boycott is Liberal leader and presidential candidate for the European Commission, Guy Verhofstadt. I think on, on, on the Sochi Games are already uh, um, an appeal that uh, our athletes can go, uh, but that uh, the, the, the political uh, leaders in Europe can maybe stay at home, uh, so that uh, it's very clear that uh, the European Union cannot upset the number of practices uh, in, in, in Russia, including the new legislation on LGDP. Will that have much of an effect as such? I think so, yes. I think if uh, what you see the, the, the last weeks and the last months is a Russian leadership who is, uh, yeah, is, is afraid a little bit of uh, what all, what everything, everything that is happening around Sochi. Ferovstadt might think that the boycott will have an effect, but Russian Foreign Secretary Lavrov has rubbished that claim as nonsense. But with Ukraine also proving a breaking point between the EU and Russia, some MEPs are looking to the June summit between the two to try to smooth over tensions which just seem to be getting worse. I think what the June summit should be used for is to de-escalate the conflict in Ukraine. I think this is a unique opportunity for EU and Russia to meet. It's, an ex it's the existing institutional structure and now this is late in the, in the conflict, but it should be used to, to de-escalate, actually finally to talk to each other. And are you optimistic of that? I'm not optimistic, but I think it's a necessity. The criticism of Russia by MEPs here in Strasbourg seems to be endless. And while a political boycott of the Winter Olympics might not achieve too much in the long run, it is a real sign of the discontent that's felt by the European Union towards the Russian Federation. But the reality is the EU and Russia are still dependent on each other. And with the summit coming up in not too long, the question isn't just whether the two can work out their differences in that time, but also who in this political standoff will blink first. This is Bjarke Smith-Meyer for JN1 at the European Parliament in Strasbourg.